It's hotter than the hottest. Higher, how, how? I got that. I need to turn some air conditioning on. How somebody gonna ask me why I, why I'm questioning the father like I do and did? That in itself don't make sense. See, first of all, the father, his story is everywhere. I ain't never seen nothing where a child goes missing and the story is everywhere. See, to not pay attention close enough is to let certain things bypass your eyes and more so possibly your ears. Right? Like, how how does Asia go missing? I, I asked this before, and yet I'm asking again, Stephen, I'm asked on why even, you know, whatever. How does a neighbor see a child? After, no, how does a neighbor see a child somewhere around 6.30 in the morning, which is when Asia's parents them found that she was gone? How does a neighbor say they see Asia walking down the road? They seen a child, child walking down the road. How does that sort of thing happen with the time frame? That's one of those things. That's the pressure cooker right there as where it stood out the most to me, as in, Asia's dad said on the 911 call that a neighbor told him right around 6.30, right? Because his 911 call was made around 6.38, 6.37, 6.38, 6 somewhere around that time period precisely, yes. How are you being told by a neighbor that they seen Asia walking down the road, they seen a child walking down the road at around 6.30? How does that make sense? If eyewitnesses stated that they seen her before that time. That I, I mentioned that before, yeah, which is why I'm making the video again because it asked me why would I say something? I just do it there, as in said it. I'm saying what I'm saying for a reason. Right? And so that doesn't make sense. That's like a pressure cooker right there. Because see, how is somebody able to see somebody that supposedly left before? That doesn't that doesn't make sense and not only that why would a father know that asia is his child why would a father say he's seen a child he that the neighbor said they seen a child walking down the road if you're the girl's parent as in her father why won't you just say the neighbor said she's seen asia walking down the road that did that didn't make sense to me all i'm trying to say is the person that came to me saying what they said all I was basically trying to say is that the, the father's story is everywhere. I'm saying it's, it's no connection. See, to tie something fully together with a story is to tie it fully together. Right? But that in itself, it, it don't, like, it's like the, the father, his story kind of swings back and forth. First it's like over here, and then it's over here, and then it's like, over here you got what i'm saying when a story i'm thinking if, if a father okay he somehow why would you want to go out in torrential rain to buy any valentine's anything when you know the daytime is coming and you can do that sort of thing when it's set in the day as in you're leaving out in the daytime on valentine's day but i'm thinking to myself if all this if the father's story is going like this and going like that and going like this and going like, I'm saying in every direction then more than likely the man could have did it <laughs> that's a complete stall out the game is what I'm trying to say right because see even the fit pieces with the parent is to in fact follow them through with that you looking in on the situation while you gathering information on what somebody has say stated and while you're gathering the pieces, the pieces are in fact fitting and aligning with that person. The possible abductor who could have took her, right? Somewhere in this, every time I rewind and take back, every time I fit a, a, a piece together, which seems like a clue, it keeps sticking and embedding with the father. Why is that? I can't be the only one that noticed that. Okay, so the father was a type of man that would check on his children not once but twice throughout the night, right? Usually your average father doesn't do that. Your average mother may. Because remember, she gave birth to them and 
there's more of a connection bond with the mother and even doing that. But a father usually wouldn't do that sort of thing unless he's doing something in the dark with a young child like that. That's too much. That's too much right there for a father to be keep going into a, a room checking on a child. I'm thinking in my mind that that's that's too much. So let me see what else stood out. Let me think what else stood out. Because see how I see stuff, the way my brain sees stuff and process information is in fact in reverse. So when somebody tell me something and how something was done as in conducted and allow me to look at it and see it, I in fact read that in reverse. And as I'm reading in reverse as well as processing, I can almost connect the dots to who might have did what. Because I'm thinking if somebody wants to tiptoe, if somebody wants to tiptoe through a situation and then leave out of that situation, right? They are in fact going in reverse coming out if they planted something, right? And for me to walk up just a random people, random person, yes, random people, brown people, me being a random person walking up on that situation where say somebody planted the mess and then tiptoe out of it in the dark and reverse is for me to walk up into it forward, right? Walk into the situation forward, look at it and read it and read it coming back in reverse, trying to see what they possibly could have did. That's a brain of a scientist. Yes, it is. In which I possess, which is why I'm not like many your average brown people because they don't even think like that. I was told, I'd be told by other people, you talk too fast. Not only that, you, you scope out stuff in a way and fashion of the way that the average person don't because you try to solve stuff, right? And not only that, people tell me they can't keep up with me in the way that I think. So, once again, I said before, to walk into a situation, never meeting these people, right? But sniff the situation out like a sniffing dog get. <laughs> Sniffy dog. That don't even make sense. That's bootleg. But to look at this crime mess and say somebody could have been in that house, tiptoed out into the night to possibly get rid of a body or whatever they did and bury whatever, right? They tiptoed into that as well as they tiptoed out of it. They planted stuff and then tiptoed out of it more than likely possibly to make themselves plead guilty or, or not plead guilty my fault not plead guilty by possibly throwing police the direction off of them plant yes get the police off their tails right you would throw the attention or something in the different direction which is why the stuff was set up like that in the first place like plan it right but the way that i see things i can go i can walk up with some notes trying to figure out what done happen on a young girl walk into the situation myself moving forward like they did look around scope around trying to see okay this right here okay that right there okay that right there right grab everything in my mind though not being there on the scene grab everything in my mind and tiptoe back and reverse with the information that i just scoped out and possibly piece stuff where somebody could have in fact been as in the individual being guilty and it looks like within the home. That's why I keep saying that. To solve any problem, I keep saying this, but this is for people that don't even sometimes know how to solve their own personal problems in life. To solve problems is to, in fact, do it in reverse. Now, the FBI, they work in a whole different, totally opposite direction themselves when they do stuff, right? Fashion, form, formulation, whatever, whatever you want to say. Configuration, how FBI do stuff. But just for everyday solving problems, you in fact want to work that in reverse. If you want to, if you're doing mathematics and you want to get an A on your test and even that and going to college and doing stuff pertaining to sciences and lab, all that lab reports, you do, you work the situation in reverse. It'll help you solve. Yes, it will. Possibly not anything like this, but you know, to try something out is just to see, right? But that father, I'm like, you know what? Everything is off about, like, the father, as in the mood. Because I'm like, this 911 call, why is this father, I said that before, too, which is why I was questioning, why is this father 
on the 911 call not checking for this young child's coat as quick as he's checking for the book bag and not only that he's checking for her tweety bird purse like who mentions in who mentions that on a 911 call unless say you're guilty and you're trying to throw that in the direction of where it doesn't point to you i'm thinking somebody could possibly do that as in a as in a guilty murder or killer or child molester or whatever i'm thinking if you're on a 911 call you're not going to sit on the 911 call and tell police her pocketbook is gone. You will more likely say her book bag is gone. You don't see her here and her book bag is gone, but you ain't gonna throw her pocketbook in that because remember, she's not a grown woman. She don't go to work and she don't work a nine to five. She don't work a nine to five, so that in itself stood out to me the most. A father would more than likely have his attention on her coat is still here, as in it's not drenched and it didn't leave, but she's gone. Yes, dear 911 call as in dispatch her coat is in fact here and not only is her coat here her book bag is gone that's how you handle a 911 call common sense logic and reasoning right because if you love and care for your child why wouldn't you look for a child's coat before you even look for a book bag am i out of am i completely out <laughs> as an out the blue and adding the mystery and the measurement because that don't even sound right that just that that whole the whole thing of a masculine man knowing that a young child's pocketbook is gone that in itself can represent a diversion attention diversion throwing attention off of yourself right Yes, as in not telling on yourself to say, whoa, her book bag is gone, but more, more than anything, her pocketbook is gone. Because what grown man pays attention to that sort of thing? A grown man that is married to a woman who has money in her pocketbook, he would in fact pay a lot of attention to that, but not his daughter, because more than likely a grown man, as I stated before, will in fact make her pack that sort of thing in her book bag and not be walking around with it in her hands in the first place enough for him to even know where it is he wouldn't know it would be in her book bag when she left enough for him not to be able to know where it was when she left because if she's gone and she got it in her book bag then more than likely it would be there and not him looking that stands out so much to me the most the fact that a father paid attention to the child's pocketbook being gone because that is in fact that goes along with wallet and all that other stuff right as well as him saying a child was seen walking down the road by the next door neighbor after she supposedly left that's a big time difference from 4 a.m to after 6 30 a.m that's a big time that's a flighty yes it is as in a gone not looking for her coat first not even mentioning on a 911 call her coat is still here what else him entering i said that him entering her bedroom so many times at night at that time because my thing is look if a child if a father really care for his child and she he knows she's going to bed then allow the child to be put to bed it is allow her to get to sleep as in deep sleep because you walking in and out of the room of a child that early in the morning is to know they're not going to get enough sleep if o'brien was a light sleeper in the first place and his father keep passing through the bedroom at night then how is either one of them able to sleep at night so something about that is wrong as in the off the calling calling card on that is to say i just pulled and i don't mean spade calling card yes as it rejected as in the story that don't that that don't make sense more than likely in my mind that will never make sense because abuse is why she left in the first place more than likely yes so if you're not giving the child enough time to go to sleep fall to sleep drift to sleep hit realm sleep the deepest sleep you can go where your eyes your eyelids twitch because you're dreaming and all the other stuff whatever your your brain is more awake yes you are asleep in room sleep but your brain is more awake during that time of room sleep it's when it's its most active the brain which is why 
your eyelids and everything twitch. So if a father is coming back and in and out of the bedroom, when are you letting the children sleep? You're coming in too much. Stay out the room. Many of these grown men should, because if they not, then that shows your pedophilia could in fact be involved. But I just was like, man, this man's story, Asia's father's story is off. All of it is off. It points every which way, every direction. And how many times have I stated that before? If a father's story point every direction, just as well as the stuff that has been planted, then what do we have? An unsolved mystery. That means something. That means if you. That means if you're telling stories in every which way, that means more than likely the inf the stuff that has been planted every which way fits and goes right along with you as in the father i ain't a conspiracy theorist no i ain't i look at stuff for what it is and not what people expect me to look at something as this man took the time to leave out his house when ain't nobody up everybody trying to get a good night's sleep talking about he gonna go get some candy for Valentine's Day for his wife. Like, are you serious? That's the type of stuff you do in the daytime. You save it for the daytime. So, seeming everybody, you know, get mad when you say stuff. And yet, I don't care. Stay mad. Mad is actually good for you. Because after I say a few good things, maybe that, in fact, will help you delve your own challenging common sense, logic, and reasoning skills. As in putting them to work. <laughs> yes, it's funny. What is this? Oh, I said about this. I'm not going to include in the video, but I, I said if Asia's bag, her book bag was found in the woods, then more than likely it's not just going to have uh, when no, when her book bag wasn't found in the woods, her book bag was in fact buried where it was buried. But if she ran through the woods, then more than likely FBI would know to check her bag for wood material. Because to run through woods, as in trees, is to have some type of tree fiber on a bag. Running through, yes, running through something like that. If you're going to run through trees, FBI know that. So I don't, I don't even have to take the time to tell them that. But if a child is running through woods like that, there's in fact a chafing process. Is that what it's called? When you strike up against something and something falls off as in a rubbing, like I'm rubbing my skin. Tree branches and all that other stuff would in fact have attached themselves something to Asia's bag. Something would in fact be there as in a trace of even tree matter to Asia's bag. Because to get caught up in some trees at night is to know you're going to even run into those sort of things just to allow them to be caught on you, even if it's a strand. As in a loose piece. Police, they do their type of work. They're extravagant in that. But you got to know that anytime you're, you can't just see, you can't just get a book bag and think that it has mud and dirt on it because she was running in the rain at that time. You have to, too, see if there is any matter particle of, say, trees, tree branches, possibly leaves. But I can think more of like bark. Like wood, bark from a tree, right? Or something like that. Something like that being latched onto the child's bag somewhere. Because even that can point police to the direction of if she was even out there running in the woods and say eyewitnesses could have possibly seen somebody else, which may or may not been her. They may, ha they may not have even seen her, is what I'm trying to say, but that book bag will be pronounced and showing wood residue because see even wood don't they call that resin let me look that up i gotta look that up myself right quick i just threw that out there by accident but i'm going to see myself i like the way my thoughts drive because sometimes i'd be going in a direction that i don't even think about and yet it comes that stuff pop in my mind the police will have to search asia's bag to see if there's a form of resin on it. I think that's like wet wood. Is it? 
That would be like, I'm thinking resin is almost like the residue from wood, which is like tree bark and stuff like that, right? That runs off when it's raining and can even dry once. Let me make sure I'm talking what I'm talking, what I'm saying, because I might not even know myself what I'm saying. Uh, resin. I'm about to look that up. When I think of resin, the reason why my brain just threw that out there spontaneously, right? When I think of resin, I think of, if I was to think of, say, a child's book bag was found like that, I'm thinking of resin will be, will be found on that bag in the form of, say, a piece of bark, piece of wood on the bag, stuck to the bag somewhere right and possibly even dry with the bag as the bag was sitting there settling right but from rain touching it it would have been wet but when wood get wet like that it has a tendency to run doesn't it doesn't wood depending on what type of yes trees it is that sort of thing i'm thinking if it's sitting in moisture for long even in garbage bags like that that sort of thing will possibly run. Say run into her bag where even say, I don't know if a black light will pick that up. I don't think so because I think they just pick up bodily fluid. But some type of device or something would be able to even pick up that. Scope that out. Light or something. UV light. But something that picks up objects like that. Some wood resin. Resin. Wood residue. Because if a bag is black in the first place. It's, time, it's hard to see strands and stuff that's on that bag. Yes, it's hard to see on a black bag, which is why police or somebody would use some type of lamp or something to try to figure out what is on that bag, even in being able to almost see through the bag or something. That's a stretch. Them see through the bag, not see through the bag, but you got them saying see through the cloth material to see what type of strands are in fact there. So that's what I had that that's what I had written right there. That I didn't include that, but I was just saying that if she if she possibly ran through the woods, then that sort of matter has to be on her bag and not just not just um hold on. Not just mud. I can't see a child just running through some woods and mud being the only thing on her bag. Trees would have to be some tree matter would have to be involved in that as well as like police would more than likely have tested even that that because that comes from the environment that that sort of thing you pick up as you're going whatever environment asia was in if she supposedly left the house whatever environment her book bag would have picked that up even if she would have been in a car with somebody, yes, the cloth material would, in fact, have gotten somewhere on her bag. And possibly more so if, say, it was a strand of hair from somebody. That sort of thing didn't happen, but I'm giving an example. If Asia would have been in a car with somebody and, say, later on they killed her or something, a strand of somebody's hair or something would have been left on that bag somewhere just for police to be able to scope the bag enough to see whose hair is it because that sort of thing can be tested that's dna in itself yes it can but not only that there will be somewhat a fiber because remember she's sitting on a seat depending on if it's leather or something like that right if it's leather i think that will be harder to scope out but if it's material cloth material i'm thinking even a strand of that could possibly have been found on her bag if she got in the car with somebody because even that strand can be mashed up yes with the interior of a car yes it can that's how police a lot of them fbi end up solving cases when children get in cars with people because they can they're able to match up strands a cloth say down in the carpeting of the floor or say in the back seat of a car even in the front seat of a car because sometimes that material get on children's socks as well, which is how even their shoes. Um, what was it? The Atlanta child murders. 
that situation that took place with many of them children, 28 children and adults, adolescents got murdered by the Atlanta child murderers, right? How police was trying to piece stuff together was the fact that it was a piece of cloth on one of the ch children's. Yes, it was on the one. Of, he was somewhat of a child, but almost going into adulthood. On his shoe stood a piece of cloth material stuck to the child's shoe. Yes. They ended up, yes, they ended up finding, but as I said before, five cases are in fact still completely unsolved in relation to those Atlanta child murders. They're still unsolved. That happened way back in 1979 going into 1981, right? But yeah. Police, that's that's how they saw. So I, I'm standing in question. Was was there any type of wood material on the girl's bag? There has to be. There has to be wood on the bag. Something, a trace, even a mall, even a tiny trace. I will hope that police could find some strand of hair somewhere, and yet it's not hers. Just enough for them to even say. Oh, so molestation. Let me question right quick. Molestation. This is not. Hold on. I said this is not. Wait. Let me. Hold on one second. Yes, this is not to say Asia's father could have been doing such lewd acts, but it's in fact to stand and question the act itself of molestation. So let's go. If a young child or a young nine-year-old child being female is being molested by her father, I'm in question of would that or would that not make her fear other men and even more so grown men outside of the family? I question that because see, I myself have never been molested by anybody. And yet if I ever, if that sort of thing took place, I would in fact tell and would have despite when I was younger when I was oh my gosh when I was a kid I was like very very timid and like very very shy which is why I'm taking the time see me and the Asia degree got a lot of things in common and yet I didn't play sports but I was in tomboy but to recognize a figure a Asia degree we had much in common with the timid and the and the shyness the fearfulness right but that very, very shy aspect is what we have in common. We have a lot of things in common. Not a lot, a lot of things, but certain things. That's why I'm able to step up to the plate and say what I think could have possibly happened. See, to live something, you got to understand, people, people will try to tell you what not to say. But every human life holds an experience, right? But to even be able to connect the dots where stuff don't fit right, and yet you have commonality with a young child. Not only, not only is that child not white, but she's brown like me. It's to in fact make the connection on just that. Me being able to, people don't want you, they don't want to hear you say, oh, well, you don't know what she could possibly have done. You don't know this and you don't know that. Well, if it's been stated that the girl was very, very shy as well as timid, I myself was that in fact as well. Family members know. So, not only that, we have much more commonality as in where, where I stated in my other videos. So in me saying just that, I'm able to call stuff out where it doesn't exactly look right and fit right, right? The examination process. So I've never been molested. That's one thing we don't have in common. But I'm in question when a child nine years old 10 years old, maybe six, seven, eight, nine years old, do they in fact trust other grown men? Or do they in fact trust other grown women outside of the household in which they live in, which possible abuse could have played out as it went down? I stand in question of that. That in itself, that involves trust. It does. When people are saying, well, maybe she was groomed by somebody. Well, how, how far does that go? even pertaining to her as in how far could she have trust or have not trust. Because see, abuse has a tendency to play itself there 
in the back of say a young child's mind as it's happening as in it's never going to leave as in go anywhere and more than likely that sort of thing would even possibly follow that young child to school the abuse if it's sexual or even physical but more so sexual molestation that is in fact going to be on her mind as she's going to school but i don't really think a young timid child like that who may in fact fear her own father or brother who is doing that sort of thing in her house a timid child like that i don't think they're going to because see fear is there anyway some of these child molesters in fact threaten death on even children in their own home as they're molesting them i've heard stories yes i have coming from where i came from the environment of all the type of stuff that went down in the environment where i came from child molesters are known at times to threaten death on children because see to be that religious as in deeply religious is to know if that sort of thing took place the molestation something of some form had to even be threatened as in imposed imposed on asia by whoever was molesting her if that sort of thing happened in order to silence her down so i can't really see her going to church and confiding in a grown adult about that sort of thing because remember if daddy did it then daddy more than likely imposed some fear into you and it could possibly have been a death threat if you were to ever open your mouth of the simple fact that he's molesting you because that sort of thing will make its way out into church as in the pulpit and the pastor bringing it out and that bringing yes the conversation of sin as well as shame on the whole family the household where it's going down no religious family wants that sort of thing to get out right but not only that, a child is going to, in fact, fear the one that is doing that to her if she lives with them. Because remember, they're providing food for that child. Get what I'm saying? To half step on something is to just say, right? As in who could have, yes, did whatever. They have stepped it all together is what I'm trying to say. Because I don't think no young child is going to say be molested and then go confide and say the coach or go confide in the teacher because even a young child is fearful enough that if she was threatened to never say nothing by the molester who could be a parent a father at that if she was threatened by him in the ear or something crazy like that she's not going to stand and sit anywhere and confide in somebody enough for them to allow them to groom her that sort of thing is not going to happen more than likely it's not going to play out because see in the back of a child mind is to know that anybody could get killed in any of this she will more than likely one want, want and possibly not confide in another grown man because that grown man might kill her father or do something bad to her father and yes young children think that way she will possibly say, please promise you won't tell. But if you're that fearful and timid in the first place, why would you even go confide in something? Because you know, more than likely, if daddy molested you, more than likely, he might have the tendency to even find out that, as in what you told to other people, a dog. You got to think more deeper than just that. Children have fear. And if there's fear from the beginning... There's, no whole, there's not a whole lot to be told to somebody else as in confiding stuff, even of that going down in the household, because if it's found out, best believe the child is going to even be more fearful because a beating might come with that. As in the, uh, the involvement of a child speaking too much and that sort of thing, getting back to her parents, it may or may not, right? But in the back of her mind, if you fear something, that in a sense is going to spew out paranoia in the realm where you're not wanting to say because if you say at nine years old somebody is doing something to you in that house children fear just that the finding out aspect if they're already abused they're going to fear what is going to happen to me if i say something because i was already threatened while being abused possibly molested or even being beat down yes possibly not in the face but bodily by a parent or something like that or even verbally I just so I'm in question of the trust aspect. How far would a child go in trusting someone after a molestation has been committed, as in the act, or possible abuse? Abuse has to be there, as in Asia Degrees household. It has to be there and has to have always been there. 
which is why she more likely ran away in the first place. I don't think she did, but I'm just saying. You don't just walk out your house for no reason in that type of weather without a coat. Because see, when abuse is going down, you don't really care if there's a coat sometimes, more than likely you wouldn't. Because you're so fearful trying to get away from somebody that's putting their hands on you or possibly knocking your lights out and no one knows, right? The signs of even that will be on the face, but even people could hit below even the waist to even molestation. That's what I'm trying to say. So how, how far? You, the viewer, I want you to tell me how far would a child that age trust? Because, see, some of us have family members in our family, and I need to ask them as an interview how they felt back then, how they felt back then as in trusting other adults after that sort of thing took place. Were they willing and open enough to have open arms to other grown men as well as grown women and even that because see that in itself will, will point even the po police in a direction yes it would because i'm saying and more than likely they got got it figured out police psychologists because they have even that on their team but i stand in question of that because if you're more than likely to have open arms to say a grown man in that manner or even his possible what's the word for it when kidnappers do work together. When I mentioned could there have been two people involved and a grown man take a woman with him. If you're willing to be open, child trusting after you've been molested, you're, you're trusting to a man and a woman. See, if a kidnapper bring a woman with him, that's where the trust issue is. Is she accepting to that, to the both of them? Right? Because see, even a woman can be nice and all this other stuff and yet even she might be a serial killer right so that's what i'm in question of how trusting are these children be yes because i study psychology myself but see sometimes a study a book as well as see a bookcase for what it is sometimes even that don't fully add up you have to allow people to say in your ear their own experience because each experience is different pertaining to molestation as in a child being able to trust other a grown other grown figures and the reason why i ask that is because to know you've been molested once hundreds of times by possibly a father is to know that sort of thing can happen on the outside of the house with somebody that is what trying to groom you as it's been said i don't believe that the grooming aspect i don't other people agree with me on that i don't believe that the grooming process i just don't so know what goes down in the middle of the night next to a bed as in a child laying on the floor is to not be able to see. Oh, my eye is itching. Uh, let me see. Yeah, I just, because the way that children think they fear things from the beginning and a child will more than likely fear You know what I'm saying? Despite her confiding and say a grown man, right, or something like that, she was still more likely have in the back of her mind somewhere settled that I hope I didn't, I hope whatever doesn't come out, what I said about daddy abusing me. Children think like that. We might think that they don't think like that, but trust and believe children have asked us all type of questions. Yes, in the daytime and even at night. That you yourself couldn't even make sense of because it was just so brilliant as they were asking you the question like, how does a child think like that? At even that age to come ask me. Thank you for calling. Let me pause. Hello. Okay, so as I was stating, I lost my thought because I do got to fix my calendar on something. I, in fact, got to fix my calendar after I get off this, as well as suction out a turtle tank. But I just don't see that. I don't, I, I don't know why I don't, I just don't see the grooming scenario taking place. I don't see that. That, in a sense, is almost a lost cause. As in, even a wheel has flown off the track. Yes, it did it. And I don't mean NASCAR. 
I just don't I don't see that. I don't know why I don't see that. The conclusion aspect as in as in a possible groom, groomer could have took her as in grooming being involved. I don't see that. Because see, you gotta have enough time even in that. That sort of thing can't be done. And not only that, how was it, how excited, I mentioned this before, how excited, I should have mentioned this in the beginning of the video, how excited was Asia before she left? Because even if a groomer was to tell her, don't do this, don't show that, don't show too much excitement, that sort of thing is still going to come out as in flash forward, as in play it forward, a young child in her mind where she can't contain herself pertaining to her leaving and yet nobody else is knowing about it because to keep a secret like that is to keep it all the way down as in hidden and others not knowing but children process information completely different than we do when we tell them don't do this no don't get to if a groomer is going to say don't get too excited we can't let this sort of thing be shown trust and believe that sort of thing is going to leak its way out yes as in reveal itself the child as in the behavior because see, a groomer can only more than likely groom a child only so much. Remember, he's not there to, to shut her down in the realm of making her close her mouth and not saying stuff or acting certain ways, I should say. A groomer is not going to be there with that child all the time. So there would have, in fact, been some excitement coming out and showing itself along the way to other people that Asia seems a little bit more excited than normal. She's a little bit more playful than normal. She's a little bit more gleeful than normal. And somebody would have had to say, Asia, stop. You know, sit down. Sit down. You need to sit down, Asia. Sit down and focus on something. Because, see, even a child like that, even a child like that more than likely wouldn't even be able to contain herself enough to even focus on her schoolwork. I know how young children think. I studied early childhood education, and not only that, I had to do labs and stuff like that as I was studying it. And on top of that, I had to observe, yes, and take notes on children. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. I graduated majoring in something else. You know how you do. But I had to do a whole bunch of labs. As well as I worked in the school system myself at various schools. Yes, I did. Some of the stuff that you see and some of the way that some of these children, yes, mistreat their own parents. I've seen enough. And not only that, I, I, in fact, worked at a Y as a bus driver as well as lead teacher. So I know what I'm talking about and speaking about. And I also worked at an autism academy. I've seen just enough behaviors to know when certain things stand out as in show. See, to have some experience in certain things, as in background experience, is to just say where you come from. And you even re read in certain parents from afar where certain things don't look right. Because, see, to work for a school and work for many of them, as I have, one of the parents that I, in fact, one of the, yes, one parent that I, in fact, worked with is, in fact, Alicia Keys, the singer. Yes, Alicia Keys, Grammy Award winning Alicia Keys was in fact her mother's sister. I had to state that because that is in fact, she's in fact precious on her game. Yes, she is in teaching. Alicia, Alicia Keys, her mother's sister is in fact a teacher. She teaches at a university as well as she was teaching with young children. And I was one of her helpers in the classroom. So when me saying this, I in fact have experienced their full blown just enough where I document it children's actions in schools as well as at the Y being a lead teacher documenting children's actions all type of things so to study children's behaviors as well as have have yes studied as well as document is to know I know just what I'm talking about Asia would in fact have had some excitement there somewhere O'Brien or somebody would have seen just that see a groomer can only keep that type of information stored away for so long before it has this way of working itself out there as in getting out there yes yes trust and believe listen to me when i say when i say what i just said that means that points back to a groomer would have been able to only 
have Asia like direct her for only so long. Excitement, excitement, full blown excitement. Was any excitement there? Was it seen, observed by anyone before she left? Because even that stands as a as a clue that a groomer, a, a groomer is not around you 24 hours a day, young child. So when he's not around, and despite him telling you, don't show too much of this, possibly excitement, it's enough she's going to, in fact, show that sort of thing anyway, because he's not around. Enough for even them to keep the secret the secret, as in hush it down, right? A groomer wouldn't have been around even the household. He possibly, yes, would have groomed, I'm repeating again, I'm sorry, but I'm trying to get you to understand, he would have groomed her away in a way just enough to possibly more than likely keep her settled down. But if you're a groomer and you're not around her all day, who's to say that sort of thing is happening once the child is even outside at play with other kids if she did that sort of thing? I, I sense and believe if Asia knew that she was really going somewhere, as in with a groomer, she would have been much more uh, confident as well as more playful as well as more excited on the court when she was playing basketball. And she would have not sat there crying in full-blown tears about her losing the game. I can't see a child like that acting that sort of thing out. She might have, would have acted for the groomer or something like that to act out that they have to keep the secret and she can't show too much that she's happy or something like that. But I don't think she would have been sitting there crying about her losing the game. That sort of thing wouldn't have, in fact, infected her. It wouldn't impact her is what I'm trying to say. And I mentioned that in one of my other videos. A young child would have put her emotions away because she would have, in fact, know she was going somewhere, which is more likely more important than that game itself. So even emotion plays a part in that psychology. If a child, what I'm trying to say, if a child was not excited the days before, in her packing, knowing she was leaving, going somewhere, then more than likely somebody in the family could have did it. Truth or dare? On your end, I'm asking a viewer. Because, see, if I worked in enough schools to know, and I drove a bus myself, being around children of all kinds, of all nationalities, yes, Asians included, right? And I was there enough to document in the school where I work in environments just enough to see how children act, even when you tell them to stop. Even if you tell them, you know what? I'm going to give you some candy out my purse. And don't you tell such and such because I ain't got enough for them. I want to, in fact, <laughs> keep some. You know how when you go to church and stuff like that, my granny them used to do that. When I'll be like, can I have some pepper, my granny? Can I have some pepper? And then she'll say, you know what, baby? I got one for you and that's all you get right but don't tell the rest of them because i don't want them coming trying to dig in my purse for my candy i only got enough on me which granny was trying to say that cheap dollar store candy right and which grannies get it's so hard it in fact knock your teeth out right so i'm just saying when you tell see a child more than likely will be excited just for some candy like that i got some candy and you don't right a kid would think that but they might be smiling on the inside that they got some candy, but the other kids didn't. Certain things have a way of sorting themselves out as in working their, their way out, even if a groomer was involved in the process. That's a stretch, but I think I'm almost there slightly. Because see, if a groomer is gonna tell that child to be quiet, he going to tell her to be quiet all the way when he's nowhere to be found. But on top of that, he's not going to be able to see her behavior as it's being done, right, when he's not around. So why wasn't, I mean, was excitement there? Only a teacher would know that, right? I can't ask the parents because they might have killed her or something of, like that. Possibly O'Brien knowing about it, her brother. Was, it, was excitement there anywhere in Asia degree? In her demeanor, her whatever. Because even that can be scoped out with a flashlight. In the daytime, I'm saying. As in her, as her sitting in the classroom amongst her classmates, 
her playing basketball out on the court. They said somewhere I seen that she played softball, but she had the basketball game before. But somewhere I just keep sensing that somewhere in the days before that little child, she would have been almost dancing. Yes, in the arms of heaven on a cloud, cloud nine, knowing that she was leaving. Because see, to groom somebody and abduct them is to make so many false promises that more than likely the abductor can't even keep himself, himself, right? Which she will possibly find out later. But a child wouldn't be able to contain himself. They wouldn't have, because I'm thinking the only way you will be able to get a child like that at that age out of her house at that time you would have had to make some very heavy promises, big promises. Like somebody said, Disney, yes, more than likely that and a lot more. Treats, extra more treats with that, right? That little girl would have been too happy. Completely too happy. So police need to go back, FBI need to go back and investigate even that. Why wasn't the little girl a little bit too much amplitude as in the fire, as in her brimming over in excitement, adjust that. The leaving aspect, going away, running away with a supposed abductor. Why was that not there? Because it's not spoken of, which is why I'm questioning that. I'm questioning it. That stood out to me the most. Everything stands out. <laughs> if you notice, everything stands out to me the most. But I'm like, wait a minute. I study psychology. I worked at schools. I got an aunt that works at a school, right? You grew, you grew up around people that were, in fact, like school teachers. Many people working at, for the Board of Education. Some people that you know that were, in fact, bus drivers, yes, that I knew. So even they knew how children act. But how? why is nowhere in the act of this, Asia wasn't even excited that she was going? She was more fearful than anything, even in making her way up out of that house, which points to everything. An abductor could or could have not did it, and yet I sense that he wasn't there in the first place, as in that supposed abduction, which the parents want you to believe. I don't believe any of it. And I, in fact, have a right to my uh, thoughts, because if I'm going to be helping to find somebody as in getting involved with missing persons, I have a right to my feeling and in this say so. I'm bold in character, as well as bold in strategy, as in using my mouth, the frontal piece in which it stands. I'm not going to, I'm not going to stop what I'm saying just because people don't like it. Like, oh well. If you're if you're grown enough, adult enough to deal with real life. See, the thing is, the problem is from the beginning is many of these people. In America and all over the globe, but more so in America, seeming this is where we live and our foot has been planted in America, right? Even black folks, you're scared to face reality of the possibilities of what could happen and what could have not happened. That's what's wrong with America right now. People are, in, in fact, scared to face reality. Is why they, why they sit watching soap operas all day trying to escape or watching celebrities worshiping them all day trying to escape. And yet when you go asking stuff that happened pertaining to a young Asian degree, they want to get mad at you. And yet they can't even face their own reality. There, it's been said as in told, stated. Can't even face your own reality. How are you going to come questioning me? Knowing I got more game than even you. The possible, yeah, the person that's going to try to check me. Check me? <laughs> I'm the wrong one to check. You're going to try to check me over what I stated type of sense does that make knowing I got more common sense as well as drive on top of you yes that individual don't ever call me out don't call me out because I might in fact shame you as it's been stated uh yeah to do things the right way is to not do them the wrong way so let me try to issue some PR on that as in public relations, as in a cleanup, even in that of what, who I just told off. I, my deepest apologies, but you yourself should come to learn even about me as in who I am and why I'm doing what I'm doing. I ain't just sitting here to, to waste a thought.
And if many of these people's saying stuff and calling me out and getting mad, if many of them would stop watching celebrities on the TV, many of them celebrities would trust and believe go broke because the celebrities are rich off of you in the first place. And they're going on vacation and all this other stuff. And so you're mad at me because I'm over here conducting things and pertaining to real life situations. Get with real life. As an examination, as an examination, that's funny and yet it's not. And yet I just threw it in your face for what it is. Moving on. I don't like people like that. They don't use their brain. And yet I do. Okay, so. I said that before. Religion. Ain't no family gonna want. Ain't no family deep religious, deeply religious people gonna want. The church and congregation everybody else to know that there's a molest molestation going down if it's a father or brother living in the house where the girl has went missing that brings shame on the family which is why somebody would in fact package it away as in give it away as in not disclose as in not even be on tv everywhere interviewing speaking on certain matters because the family don't want that to possibly be scoped out what could have in fact happened even molestation that brings shame trust and belief on a black family who is deeply religious and i should know coming from a deeply religious background in which i come from they say what is done in the dark always come to the light and yet many black folks white folks too but let me look at people that look brown like me brown eyed girl brown eyed folks right that look like me Many church people do so much damage and stuff and stuff in the dark, right? It is just so interesting that many, even black families, the damage that goes down in the four walls of the house and yet is completely unstated to outsiders. And yet sinners on the outside of all the activity are in fact judged along the way, right? By those that are deeply religious. They keep stuff in the dark, is what I'm trying to say. Why the sinner keep everything out in the light? Why wouldn't they? They're a sinner to, from, to begin with. I myself am a sinner and nothing beyond that. So, let me see. Yes, do young, do young nine-year-old girls fear men if they've been molested? And up to what point? up to one point because I stated before not every young nine-year-old child girl is the same as in how she's thinking but to stand on the side would say a young child that's not here nor was she ever here right to try to piece this together is try to read through even her her character the way she could have thought being nine years old timid and shy that's a totally different, that's the opposite of the majority of the masses. Is what I'm trying to say. You know what I'm saying? Because even people like that could be introverted. The mother and father didn't even say whether she was even that. On the TV, I'm saying. Because even that will help in solving the case. What type of, was she introverted? Was she extroverted? What was she? Because that, that helps point in the direction that if she was introverted, how a the trust value in this, her trust as in where it stands pertaining to, say, a kidnapper, abductor, and how they could have lured their way into her. That's why I'm asking, was she introverted? Was she extroverted? That sort of thing has to be told in some way. What was she? Because I'm thinking, I'm thinking, let me think. This is a stretch as well. To study psychology is to just, you know, kind of try to configure. I'm thinking a predator, as in child molester, uh, child kidnapper, would more than likely have a great advantage to a child who, say, is introverted. A child that is more than likely introverted right it could be in tune with 
inside because that's why she is an introvert from the beginning, right? If Asia was that way, more than likely a predator could more than likely lure her out of her comfort because an introverted being sometimes is oftentimes alone. Whereas an extroverted child, they can be lured just as well, possibly even more quickly. Because to be around so many faces all the time, an extroverted child is to say they're comfortable around people for somebody to exchange words and then just snatch them up, right? But an extroverted child, sometimes even them feel at, uh, at ease or completely not at ease, depending on how developed they are in their social skills of be around somebody as in if their intuition will go off. Because even children have intuition. Let me get away from him. He don't seem right. My niece did that. Yes, she did. At three, four years old when she didn't feel vibes about certain people. She would get away from them, right? And so, I'm thinking... A extroverted child will more than likely, let me think, could easily be scooped up right then on the spot. But if a child is introverted, they more than likely, that sort of thing will take time. That's what I'm saying when it don't make sense about the grooming aspect where I don't think it fits in the sciences. Because that sort of thing, the grooming process, the trust value, a young, very timid, shy individual is why they're like that in the first place. If abuse didn't put that in them. Because even abuse can put shy and timid ways into a young child, right? Make her fearful of everything. But to be timid and fearful and, sh and shy, know that somebody has to, in fact, gain your trust. Because to have a fear sometimes, and even irrational fears, is to know somebody has to work their way into gaining trust with that young child, nine years old, female. It would have to have took time, a little bit much more time than, say, um, a child who is less timid and fearful and more than likely an extrovert. So to... To take time with that, as in the grooming process, right? Earning the trust. If it was an outsider, outside of the family, right? That sort of thing would have been scoped out by somebody. Yes, it would. By school, somebody at school. Things have a way of making themselves out, as in looking suspicious. Church. Because, see... Even if a child goes to church with somebody and she's involved in stuff with church or whatnot, she's being pulled to the side. If she's constantly being pulled to the side, one of them children would have noticed that. That would have been, in fact, observed by a child because even children are nosy. Yes, they are. Sometimes children, like when I worked in schools, that used to irritate me to the fullest. You sitting up there trying to have a full-blown commotion conversation with another child about something they've done or pertaining to something. And here come two, three other little children standing there as you're talking to this child sitting in a seat. And they all want to hear it. They, what I'm trying to say is young children like to be a part of that process in the conversation. So somebody would, if that sort of thing took place at church... Because you got to be on some type of grounds anyway. If the young girl was not known to just be out here talking to random people, when she got groomed, she had to be on some type of grounds somewhere, just enough for somebody to see when she was talking to somebody. Because in order to groom somebody is to put in the work to do it, the grooming process. And that's going to take time and doing it, right? But not only that, children are in fact going to be want to listen. Because see, all young children want to feel important in the first place. A lot of young children, yes, they, they want to feel important in the first place. So sometimes while you're sitting there, uh, an adult talking to another child about something, if you're trying to groom them or something crazy, more than likely if a man would have did that is in the grooming process, the child, whoever, two or three of them would have came and sat by your side or stood there wanting to hold just as much conversation as what you're already holding. And more than likely cutting you off in the process. Children, 
they do that sort of thing. Because, see, many children are not given enough tension at home to begin with, which is why I'm mentioning which I, what I'm mentioning in the grooming process. If children was around in the atmosphere, say somebody from church, it had to have happened on some grounds, either school grounds, church grounds, or she was playing sports on the grounds of even that, right? It had to take place and other children more than likely had to be somewhere around because if Asia's not going to the mall and to the store and all that by herself, then who's in fact say, you got what I'm saying? When people say, well, no, you don't know what you're talking about. Yes, yeah, somewhat I do because I work with children just enough to know that children, they sit and watch and hold a conversation. You're helping to run, you're helping to run a classroom. Get talking to little Johnny about this and now here come little whoever, little Anna or something about that standing there a little bit too long after you done told them to go sit down. They want to still hear and then not only that, to make themselves look important because they want to be heard. Yes, children even then want to be heard. They start cutting you off and miss sentence while you're holding the conversation with this other child that don't involve them. That's in fact how children get down. And even parents know that. I don't have children, but to have been surrounded by hundreds of them, hundreds of them, of all kinds, and working in classrooms is to just say what I know and how they act. Somebody, and not only that, when that when when uh, they sent the psychologist or whatever up to the school after it happened to talk to the kids and ask them what they thought and they felt, the children right then would have been mentioning. I'm, I'm thinking and hoping they sent that same psychologist up to the church where Asia was going and possibly as well to the area of where she played sports and stuff like that on the premises of there to question children that was involved in, in even that because, see, children tell it. They ain't going to hold because, first of all, somebody is important coming in the room. She's, in fact, a, psych a psychologist coming to question or private investigator, whatever you want to call it wrapped as a psychologist she's coming on the school premises to ask children questions so children in fact want to be heard they feel they're important now that somebody important is coming to the school they want to tell everything right so if they would have seen something they would in fact have stated it they wouldn't have held back nothing no no ounce of nothing trust and believe because to know you're surrounded by somebody important that is in private investigator or psychology is to know you know what I want to feel just as important as her, and I'm going to tell her everything I think and feel. And more than likely, they're going to tell her stuff that even she not want to hear that makes the family, in fact, look bad. Because <laughs> that's what children do. They like, to, they like to play sides as well as take sides. And even that, when somebody important walks in the room, they're going to kick you to the curb for just a little bit and get on whoever side is important, even if it's the preacher pastor man walking in the room. They're going to be like, you know what? Preach pastor. I seen uh, Asia over there talking to such and such that, yes, is the youth leader, pastor, or such and such. They're going to tell it all. Children lay it out. <laughs> That's why you got to be careful what you tell around them because, see, children will even tell if they heard mommy and daddy having sex the other night or whatever, right, or arguing. They tell it all. They tell it They tell it all. <laughs> You will, you will be in disbelief. Example, my niece. Now, we are all humans, which is why Discovery being my family, the link is provided below. Discovery Channel, Discovery ID, Investigation Discovery to Own Network. We are all human. So many of us sometimes get naked sometime in the day, right? I myself in the past, using example, have been known to practice um yoga in the new as in the summertime not being fully clothed when it's hot burning up outside and there's no ac in the house yes nude yoga you can look that up it sounds crazy me mentioning this on this video but i gotta use my nieces pertaining to this asia degree situation of how children talk too much so me when i was practicing what i was practicing new yoga right you can possibly yes find that online google it my nieces went back and told everybody that that's what I was doing. Like I wanted people to know that sort of thing. That's what I'm saying. 
children talk a lot, as in too much. So that sort of thing, and them being interviewed by somebody, a psychologist investigator would have came out. Even if she plays sports, and Asia was standing there with the coach, one of her teammates would in fact have wanted to know what was she talking about if the, if the coach would have been a kidnapper, right? I question that book, The Whipping, what is it, The Whipping Boy? The Whipping Boy was about a kidnapper, was about children that was kidnapped, but in the end they came back home or something. I need to, I need to see what that book is fully about. The Whipping Boy. Because at first, hold on, let me let me Google right quick. It just to me a groomer would would uh in fact it would take too long, I think. Take a little bit longer than normal. Whipping boy. Whipping boy book. I thought that was just oddly strange that they were reading that book at that time. I thought that was so strange that they were reading that at that time, right? Because um, at first, I was side eye in the father. I Yes, I was. I was side eye in the father. Like, you know what? That man is completely guilty in the eyes of me and possibly by the eyes of the law. The father is covering, right? That's what I was thinking. That's what came flipped in my mind real quick as soon as I heard about the age of degree situation, right? But at first, I was also too in question of a question of the teacher, Asia's teacher. Like, how is that so coincidence that they read in that at that time? Like that, I didn't think that Asia slept walk nowhere, and no, did not. I did not think she was going to think she was going on an adventure. I didn't think none of that. No. Right, I didn't think any of that. I was like, well, could the teacher have had something to do with that? Right. To deflect the attention off them. But that, that wouldn't have worked. Because see even a, a kidnapper. Who would have been a teacher. No he would have got scoped all the way out. As in chewed all the way out in the ass. By law enforcement themselves. If he would have something to do with that. Because that's almost a slap in the face. To read a book about kidnap. And then go and kidnap you being a school teacher. So I was thinking to myself. Nah I don't think so. If Asia's teacher could have did that. Because. There's only two people who was close enough that could have been close enough to her outside of family that is not immediate, you know, um, blood relatives. And, and that would, in fact, be the coach as well as her school teacher. Her school teacher will be the most closest because, see. The reason why I said that is because a teacher to stand in and direct the classroom, it said, no, you can get close enough to a little girl just about, yes, to whisper stuff in her ear, even as other individuals are leaving and walking out of the classroom. As good as I get with my mouth, I know somebody will want me to, in fact, question a teacher. You want me to question a teacher? Seeming they get mad at, at me for questioning everything else. I will one of these days take the time to question the teacher just to put that out there to settle even them down. The children that sit cry about what I'm questioning. But yeah, so a teacher would be close enough, right? But I can't really see a teacher taking the time to have children reading a book and then not think he going to get scoped out later. Or maybe he would. I don't know. Okay, so... Wait, let me think. Yeah, that's just strange. A groomer grooming somebody. There, it, it seemed like there will be lack of trust there in a little girl at that age. If she was being molested and her innocence was taken. It would it would seem like the it would seem like the abductor, kidnapper, whoever would have to buy some time in that. He would have to buy some time in that, even, even in the realm of the trail, right? If that sort of thing took place and how stuff was planted. Wait. 
he would have to buy some time with with because see one should take innocence away from a child it, it it's really no if that sort of thing happens say molest molestation or even physical abuse by a parent a ch you you would have to really really gain a child's trust because she don't really know after that sort of thing. She really don't know how to, say, perceive the world after something like that has happened. A young mind has has issues processing that sort of information. As in, um, in a sense, are being beaten on by somebody. And then going out in the night air with somebody. Because, see, I'm thinking a young child might be thinking if there was trust problems and say if she was molested and innocence was taken or she was being beat on at home a child will more than likely question her even if the kidnapper abductor who she who has she been being groomed by if he going to even show up i'm thinking a young child that age who fears everything possibly put had fear put into her by say whoever was abusing her in her home what more than likely herself if she has because that has to form trust issues abuse more than likely a young girl like that would in fact possibly beg her abductor to show up at the door as in outside her house somewhere as in his wheel somewhere possibly up the block a little bit and not all the way down on highway 18 i can't see that that's it's, it's too much of Something here with the trust factor is out of place, in which I just spoke on. Because trust and believe, if a young child has been abused, she's going to have some sort of trust issue there. A trust problem, which will, that in a sense will make her want to leave. If she left on her own will, like they say, then that knows and shows that the trust right there was broken of why she left. But if she was grooming that, she's going to have trust issues as well pertaining to leaving. If she's groomed in that of, come on, young girl, I'm going to take you with me. This is where I want you to meet me time and date at 4 a.m. in the morning. Trust is in that as well, right? I can't really see a young child that age having somewhat of trust issues and not crying to her groomer that, could you please meet me at my door or outside somewhere by my house. Does that sound right? Because if somebody has some trust something, even though somebody promised you all these false promises, you're going to still be thinking a young child, I hope such and such. I hope, first of all, I hope I don't get found, found out by mom and dad. I hope they don't find, me, find out I'm leaving before I leave. So I'm going to be excited about that, possibly enough to hide it. But not only that, I'm going to question, hopefully, he made the promise he's going to show up. So I, I hope he show up. But the child will more than likely beg him to be closer to her house and not make her work walk that many miles to meet him somewhere. Trust and believe, trust and issue, issue stand just as it has stated, I'm saying. As in the examination of it. It's just something about that is just off. And, and let me speak on black insecurity. Black insecurity is, in fact, a thing. Whether black folks want to, in fact, accept it for what it is, but black insecurity is, in fact, a thing of not reaching full potential, right? Being everything that you should be because you fear that you might pass other people up, right? But on top of that, let me pause for a second. Goodness, this is always going off. It's so irritating. I gotta put that for eight o'clock. 
So if I know that black insecurity in fact exists, I know that more than likely Asia had insecurities there as, as well, being a black individual. Because see, even slavery points to that. Yeah, in order to connect the dots, is connected all the way. That your average black person has not just one, not just two, but many insecurities, which point back to slavery. Because to have parents, ancestors born into that is to know you're going to pass it off to your child, right? And some of that could be being timid as well, because many black children, in fact, have been known to be timid as well, sometimes too overly shy. That points back to the insecurity of the past pertaining to slavery and that mindset being passed down through the generations as in it never left, right? And so if, if Asia was timid, some of that can be in that as well, right? Her being timid outside of just abuse. So that's much more trust that say an abductor would have to in fact work on or something. something that's interesting because if the abductor was white or something asia's mom or something come across because the way that she said how missing children are not portrayed to the media sometimes a mindset like that the mother sometimes will have a mindset to sit and speak about how she don't like white people sometimes in front of her children Black people are known to do that. And I don't agree with that type of thing. No, the older I get, because even sometimes you're going to need, in fact, white people to help you and solve your mysteries. Yes, you are. But I'm stating how the mother stated that black children, black and missing, how black children are not portrayed on TV because of them being black. I can understand what she's saying about that somewhat. But once again, individuals like that, as well can be the same individuals that sit and talk about how they don't like white folks and say it amongst their children. So that in fact would say if a if a white abductor was involved as in grooming her, if that was there, say a coach or a teacher groomed her and say they were white, that in fact, that's more of a trust issue as well. Because I done sat and heard how a lot of black folks sit and talk about how they don't like white people. And then they get mad at me when I say I don't agree with them. Because sometimes we need white people just as much as they need us. There's a give and take with everything in life. Even the exchange of giving dollars and cents as you're at the cash register, right? Getting your change back and all that other stuff. Transactions, whatever. So if a groomer was white and say Asia's parents was a type of thing as what I've heard many black people say they don't because they always scream about police brutality that's a whole different case and scenario but many of them just when something bad happens and it involves somebody black and somebody else white was involved outside of police brutality a lot of times these white or a lot of times these black people in the black families you will hear them call white people out on that sort of thing as in them not liking white people and how they hate white people for that sort of thing right so Asia's mom come across like that type, possibly black militant or something. Maybe somewhat pro-black, but not completely a watered down version of pro-black, right? But that's enough for even a young Asia to take the time to hear that with her own two ears that, okay, my parents don't really like. And not only that, her father being black and living in the house. I'm sure he had to have somewhat dislike for white people from in the past like history yes i've heard enough to hear and understand how the thoughts of black people think right and so even that if him being black knowing that he feels that the odds are against him in the white man's world like they say then he's going to in fact discuss that in his household enough for his own children to hear and possibly his son because more than likely his son is going to grow up in that as well as in some these parents will tell you don't trust white folks because what happened they hold on to that is what i'm trying to say so a young child would even question that if she's going if she's being groomed by somebody white that's a male figure that will in fact be in the back of her mind of what she heard in her own house about say somebody on the outside looking different from her and color and skin tone 
in that individual being white. Because to have mommy and daddy feel that, you know, many of these mommy, black mommies and daddies feeling that the world is against them because they're not white. They a lot of times sit and say, even in family discussion, and children sit and listen to that thing, which is how racism begins all over again. To allow racism to work its way through is to keep repeating the same tired ass story. Yes, it is. That is, in fact, what that is. I got white, black folks, a mixture of all in my family, and I'm so happy I do. Mexicans and all that, because that spells diversity, which it should, the world. Got to get over the past somewhat. So, and me saying that a child will have more than likely some trust issues pertaining to the race aspect of, say, if a teacher was white or a coach and they wanted to groom her, that's a harder trust to get into as into if if trust was broken and you're trying to build it back grooming someone that would take a little bit of work leg work on a groomer at doctor his end if he don't look like her in the form of fashion of color yes it would because in the back of her mind, she will think, well, mommy said that, you know, whatever about whites and daddy said whatever. More than likely, daddy said, daddy have had to say something. That young child's daddy have had to say a lot of bit much about some white people. Because remember, when you turn on the news, you see certain things, right? And my thing is, when I see certain stuff going down and it's going on between black people and they fighting with white people, I got to always remember there's two sides to the story. It's the black side just as well as the white side, as in why there was possibly deadly commotion and even that, right? Of what could have led to even the argument of that. I can't stand on black folks' side and I can't stand too far on white people's side. I got to stand right in the middle and question, well, what took place? And just stop looking at slavery trying to say, oh, all white, the masses, massa hate us, or however you sit, pronounce it, massa hate us because we black and then be telling your children that sort of thing you shouldn't be telling your children in the first place because once they get older they'll start going against the system and doing stuff to get themselves locked up as well as a key thrown away because how they're raised in racism so to prevent such is just to move away from even that okay so Yes, a lot of these, in fact, a lot of these children, black children, are in fact being locked up, as in going to jail because their parents are telling them not to trust white folks, right? And yet many black folks can't even trust their own because black community is divided in the first place, right? Because black on black crime is very real, right? But you got many black parents that tell, teach and tell their kids not to trust white people, and that is in fact how their own children end up in jail as well as dying and deceased, right? Because to keep telling your children that is to make them question, well, what hope is there? Because if I'm going to work in the morning and, and that person doesn't hold the same face, skin color, they're white and yet I'm black going to work. And mommy and daddy told me not to trust them. Here I am 21 years old. I don't trust this white man who is my boss. It's the more unlikely you're gonna go up against your boss. And disrespect him and possibly put your hands on him based off of what mommy daddy told you pertaining to slavery back in the day how you should hate white people and now you are sitting there with a criminal record yes young child i don't like that sort of thing is what i'm saying there should be a better way of even how black people school and teach your children or how the dislike of, of blacks towards white people if you don't like somebody there's better ways of teaching your children and not just teaching your children in a way that make them completely hate white people to the point of disgust where they start just going on a job and this i used to do that in my past and disrespect them because some of the stuff that i was taught even in my past growing up about white people don't like you and stuff it made me get to a point of almost yes yes almost violent almost in the way of you're not if okay you're white and you don't look like me which mean you hate me so i'm gonna have to prove to you by cussing you out yes in a violent manner on the job that should sort of thing was yeah wrong on my end but to be taught that sort of thing is how that play out with children going to jail that's the that's one of the number one reasons as well as why many black children are in fact in jail it's based upon what their parents are teaching them and not the other way around, as in white people just locking them up 
throwing away the key on them. To, to teach your child some racism is to know it's going to follow them not halfway through, but all the way through. Even going up in their career, if they got one or even if they don't, just working at a carryout store. That sort of thing has to follow you, right? The child. And you're disrespecting and possibly beating and putting your hands on white folks because you've been taught that at a young age. You are, in fact, going to get a jail record from that sort of thing. So you can't blame white people. You got to, in fact, have that up with mommy and daddy as in the conversation of where they, they didn't teach in school you right on even that. There should have been a better way because you can't you can't be going all the way pro-black in 2018. That is not going to work because we're a melting pot of all things, all shapes, nationalities. And not only that, not only that, we're living in a time period where the percentages are completely high in mixed children being born. That in itself is the great divide, is what I'm trying to say. The mixture of mixed kids and people wanting to hold on to the past of some racism where white folks hate us, please get over it. That's, in fact, low self-esteem on your end if you can't get over that sort of thing because we know what has been done in slavery. And I ain't pushing that away. I'm not saying that that hasn't taken place. And yet to hold on to that and use that excuse of why you can't do better for yourself, that's, in fact, low self-esteem. That in, It tells on yourself is what I'm trying to say. How would I sit up here blaming a race of people that I don't know and yet they have wronged me? Yes, I've experienced racism myself. Yes, I have and, in fact, got fired. But why would I sit up blaming all populations of white folks and I don't even know all white folks and blame them or why I'm at a loss in life when I should have just enough self-esteem and experience just enough to get up and do for self? Instead of waiting for them to come tell me how beautiful I am just because I'm brown. First of all, they're in a different, totally different group than you. You are white. No, you are black and they are white. So it's not their place to come even give you acceptance over the fact of you being black in the first place. That's your own responsibility. That's called self-responsibility. In fact, what it is. I am so different from the majority of how people my age the black race my age, how they act. At times I can give some of the older black folks a pass, depending on who they are, I can give them a pass. But all these other ones are completely stunted in growth as in the mental capacity of even growing up in life. You gotta grow up sometime in life and not sit up here, even some older blacks using white people for excuse why they can't do anything. And not only that, standing around talking to other black people and talking down on other black people for the simple fact that that other black person chose to get up out of slavery and go do some better deed to help not only themselves, but other blacks around them in the community. You got that's that in the, that in itself is in fact black on black crime. That is what in fact what that is. Anytime you see somebody that's doing much more better than you and they're black and they possess the same black face as you. You, in fact, want to applause and give them a clapping hand and place of you downing and ridiculing them because they chose to pick up a book in place of a shotgun. Did I speak too loud? Ounce for ounce, I think I did. As well, put down the 40 ounce as well. Because black folks sometimes make me mad, which is why I stay what I say. And they think I'm going to rise above, and yet I am. I am. I'm so much a rise above. Because even sitting watching celebrities all day and yet not having nothing to go with it, such as real life, as in facing it, is petty in itself. Moving on. Let me say what I say because what I got to say, it offers some realness as well as some conclusion in the room of deepness as dear black community, get it together. Whether you live in the suburbs, whether you live in the rural, off a rural road, such as a Highway 18, even the degree family, degree, whoever, even they need to get it together outside of just church and praying all the time because Jesus ain't showed up yet, which means you got to take some of the priorities into your own hands and working them out. And not calling out other races of people for your failure, because, see, I think if somebody didn't take the time to show my child face off, I said it before, I will reach out to celebrities knowing they know who you are anyways and helping to expose your child's story. You got to come up from failure is what I'm trying to say. So I said. Oh, 
Yes, there, there are in fact hundreds upon thousands of black children who are being abused and who have been abused and yet those black children have never said or spoken it, pertaining it to the detail. Sometimes you don't even find out to years later. This goes back and points back to the grooming process pertaining to abduction and trust, gaining trust of a young child. There's many black children because see there's insecurity in even that. Your average black child is in fact insecure and that's not a put down, no, it's not. It's, in, it's a proven fact. Many of them are in fact, and yes, it points back to slavery. Yes, it does, right? Because the pass down is just that, right? But not only that, to come from that sort of mindset, slavery is to in fact keep secrets, really big secrets, really big family secrets. So that's why I said I can't see if abuse was going on, I can't see Asia saying that out of her mouth because she was timid from the beginning. Timid and fear points to insecurity enough to not allow certain things such as that, which is atrocious to get out as in come out your mouth. There's people in their grave right now who have in fact kept molestation as well as rape a secret. Black in the black community. They're dead and gone and yet possibly never said that happened to them. Because even black people, I stated over generations, are grooming that. As in the secrecy. You keep business, you keep your home life affairs on the inside of the house. That's why so many run a church. That's in fact why so many black people run a church. Because there's a lot of secrets untold. And the best way for them to even deal with it a lot of times is to in fact go to God. In the four walls of a church. It's, it's a way for them to put it behind them as in you're not scoping it out. Because that, that's a cover. God, for people to get deep religious, I said before, for people to get deep religious is for them to use that for a covering, a shield. A shield them from not only their own sins of the past as well as their current sins of today that they're trying to cover and hide from you. But it's also to cover a lot of the family secrets. Because they know even you or I won't question them because remember they stand by God as an under him and using him as a shield and covering. So the groomer would have had to use something else. A false promise but if she wasn't excited then what did he use because even boredom stands in that as I'm, I'm bored of even thinking about even that if you're going to be some type of kidnapper and the child wasn't excited then that's that's a no just show what it is that sort of thing couldn't have happened Yes, I said a young child will more than likely be forgiving to her molester, whether it's a father or a brother or mother. But not only that, she will want to prevent him from not going to jail. You see enough, you see enough to see pertaining to psychology. Children are very forgiving people, just as dogs are very forgiving people that a lot of times See, love is involved in even that, even if a parent don't love a child and abuses her. The child was still, because children are needy to begin with. That's in fact why they depend on their parents, because that's why they're there in the first place. To give love is to give back, right? But if no love is to being shown from, say, the parent to the child, even the child would still want to be there with the parent as in showing them love unless something gets really really bad traumatizing to make them want to walk out at night right but as abuse is happening because abuse doesn't happen one time if it happened once more likely it'll keep transpiring into something else something worse right but children are oftentimes forgiven forgiving children are oftentimes forgiving when say a parent has molested them say a father or uh abuse in the realm of sexual or physical right i just said that but i'm repeating it again 
because she wouldn't more likely she wouldn't want her father to go to jail she would not she to she would not want him to go to jail over what he may have done such as the act molestation or abuse so to prevent him from going to jail is why she wouldn't say that he was molesting her Yes, she would possibly would want him to stop taking advantage of her sexually or physically, but she would love him just enough not to put him in jail because remember young children, yes, they do. They 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 forgive children forgive a lot of things. You be you be shocked at some of the stuff that children forgive on. And yet still trust is still broken in that despite because they still feel leery of what abuse may come next that's what i'm saying what what is still trust broken in that despite them being easily to forgive a parent in the act such as that even physical punching you in the face they still are leery what child wouldn't be because to be abused is to put fear anyway and more likely in the back of the child's mind is thinking when are they going to do it again when are they going to do it again? What time is it going to happen again? And oh, I don't like this, how distraught it makes me feel being a young child, nine years old, or even the man getting on top of me or yanking me by the hair or something crazy like that, right? That has to be traumatizing to a mind. That's where the trust is broken. Because you got, even a young child has to prepare her mind for even that. If she was molested last night and say she's going to be, say she was molested last night and the night before and she know that she's going to be molested tonight again she has to almost put herself out of her own mind and being able to let me think deal with that mentally the traumatization in that right so she will know more likely that sort of thing is coming and yet she more likely will feel sickness and even that knowing that it's coming and she can't stop it. And if her mother know about it, she ain't doing nothing either. Some of these no good ass mothers, they get on my nerves because some of them be knowing that abuse be going on, such as molestation. But to be desperate for a man is to keep a man, as in keep it on the hush. Many in the black community do that sort of thing. And white as well, but to be brown shade is to speak on and call out. So the trust is broken in that. Because that's traumatizing to know that tonight you're laying in your bed and you know that he might come in the room tonight and do what he did to me last night. As in he possibly done form a habit of doing it every night and you got to lay there and wait for him to come. How sickening is that? Saying a child, that would be enough to make a child be throwing up or something. Being sick to her stomach and thinking about it. So she will forgive him but she would forgive him but she wouldn't trust him because trust is in that and not knowing the time and when he's coming back into the room to do it again to take advantage of you so that in fact drives over to how she would interact to say a um groomer abductor kidnapper See, when I repeat as much as I do, people don't know. When you pre repeat something, you're repeating it. This is, in fact, a brainwashing. <laughs> what I do is, in fact, a brainwashing technique. I repeat like four or five times, right, just for you to remember the information. So I'm like almost brainwashing you in the process of getting the information in where it sinks in just for you to think about it but not forget it. That's, in fact, what I'm doing. I'm brainwashing you so that when you're out about your date and say two months later happen come along and then you forget about the asia thing degree situation and it pops back up online and you see it and you think well i remember when that one girl was talking about such and such in the video about that it's to help you keep talking is what i'm trying to say that when somebody give you information as in repeat stuff over and over they're brainwashing you that's like an earworm 
placing it in your brain as in embedding it for you not to forget so when the person's name come back up you are prone to discuss it even in conversation when that person is nowhere around it's a marketing strategy mass media marketing strategy ask oprah winfrey she knows <laughs> her link is below but Yes, Asia would have, whoever whoever would have molested her in that house, she would have been forced to keep that a secret. I said that this this is what I said in the beginning. I'm I'm speaking ahead. I could I could see a parent if they molesting a man, if a man is molesting his own daughter, I could see him issuing her a death threat. Saying it in her ear that even more likely the church or nobody else would not ever find out that sort of thing. It would never come out. As in telling her he will put her to death just because he's sneaking in her room at night to get on top of her. I can see that happening. Because other way, any other type of way, that sort of thing will make its way on the outside of the room. As in even her mom finding out if she didn't already know. Or possibly a school teacher. I'm thinking. I'm thinking. If you molest somebody, or even if you abuse them, I'm thinking that parent will have to threaten them, threaten that child in the worst way you would threaten them, so that it doesn't even make its way the abuse to a teacher or even a coach. Because that's to be tainted all across the community in the city or even county where you live. By the time it's make its way on out. But for her to be that shy and timid is to know a person could have threatened her with anything, even her own father, even her own brother, to quiet her down. Because, see, if the church found out that sort of thing, they would have a field day. I myself might even show up in town where, where Asia Degree and all the Degree family, if that sort of thing came out. Everybody would have a field day over the simple fact was, how did you let that bypass your eyes that a man was molesting his own child? Or a brother was molesting his own child. That's why people ch choose to keep stuff like that secret. Because church members, everybody in my family just about go to church except for many of us sinners, the younger ones in the family. We don't really go to church and do that sort of thing right no longer. But I've heard all type of conversations pertaining to the church. You got ministers, the church directors that direct music. They're some of the first ones that are gay. Yes, music directors in churches, black churches. The majority of them are, in fact, gay males. And the congregation don't know it. And yet some of them sense it. But a lot of times they don't even put him out of the church because he sings so well. Like some of the logic and reasoning in some of these people. I get with, because of my sexuality, I get with acceptance. Yes, I do. But I'm thinking if you don't like that sort of thing, why would you keep having him singing? But you say, well, he sang good, so we're going to keep him here. But they put everybody else gay up out of the church. Like, seriously? Come on. They say to be a tattletale is to rat out. That, I mean, that's what they say, right? But I just think that is so weird pertaining to the conclusion. Some of the stuff that I've heard on even people's speakerphone, on social media, I've seen it all pertaining to the churches and some of the secrets that many in black churches keep. And how it even makes its way out on social media, how people start fighting and conflicts and all this other stuff pertaining to it because a secret has been put out what was happening in such and such household there was a minister he was in fact gay or bisexual no he was in fact gay from the beginning and then he went into practicing practicing bisexuality right as in using a woman for a cover marry her and had kids by her right but then it later came out that that is in fact what he was was full-blown gay right so the church was shocked and it was all on so social media, all on Twitter and everywhere else, right? Everybody stood in shock. But I'm like, how could you be shocked? That's in fact uh, human beings, right? The gay aspect. Like, human beings, y'all had him up there being a minister of the church. 
and y'all shocked that the man was full-blown gay from the beginning and not completely bisexual but full-blown gay they even brought his lovers into the mess yes they did they brought his lovers and had pictures and everything else on social media brought his whole past into the mess is what i'm trying to say church folks of this gay minister that was covering himself he was in fact fully gay covering himself as a bisexual but not really covering himself he was trying to play straight in it so if he remained questionable in that the covering would in fact be bisexuality if somebody found out because they might be able to say well he was gay but he can say well yeah in my past i was but look i got a woman that was why he did that so nobody can ever say what religious people are and what they don't do as in the form of the dirty deed as in what goes down between between man and woman at night or even young child and grown man even yes let me look at this nobody could ever say you can't say well they're they're deeply in the church and that's it all of us been going there's a lot of us that been going to church our whole life and then stopped along the way in our early 20s just enough to see you know what this is not for me because many of these church people is doing much more absurd things as in lewd con con yeah yes conducts they're doing such lewd acts in the church right and all this drama more so than sinners outside so if sinners are not doing as much as that crazy stuff and yet the church is maybe i belong on the outside just looking in outside of the church i i, I mean i cannot believe people would even think just because people go to church that they're upstanding uprighteous people uprighteous pillars in the black community and community as a whole where they do that? It's a question. Where do they do that at? Where where do they do that at to think just because people go to church that they cannot do no wrong and they haven't? When when a majority of the molestations even in the past pertaining to the Catholic churches have in fact been in the four walls of church as it's happening i'm sure many of them catholic priests was probably banging out young boys in the back bathroom somewhere on a low you gotta you can't you can't let that that's that's too naive that's too naive to say just because somebody's draped in a prayer cloth and praying on their hands and knees and got a crucifix those individuals could very well be the same people that's doing everything that you would have not even considered. The lewd acts, conducts, and everything else. It, go, it goes down. Trust and believe. I, I done been to enough churches to know and undersee that even some of these church folks, in, in fact, masturbate in the dark while they telling you about how you going to hell just for looking at somebody that's the same sex as you that's cute. And yet they're masturbating, thinking about somebody in the process. Like, how does that happen? That's an if that in itself is lust in itself, right? And so, for many people that go to church, even if any of them don't have a partner, they have to be doing molestation. And I mean, not molestation. They have to be masturbating or something like that. Did I say molestation? For I think I I need to edit it out because I think I messed up my word. If I'm looking, yeah, did, did I say masturbation? See, molestation and masturbation sounds almost the same. I said that people that don't have partners go to church, right? And so they sit masturbating, thinking about some other person of the same sex or opposite sex, right? But then they call you out if you're looking at somebody that's the same sex as grown as you, right? But you're not lusting after them. You just think they're cute. That church individual will call you out, and yet you ain't even got in bed with them, and yet they're laid up somewhere. Yes, masturbating to the thought of somebody of the opposite sex or same sex. See what I'm saying? I just, I don't take anything for what I see. I like to know what's up underneath it, as in what's under it. The deeper, the covering. Because 
you know, anybody can fake even while they're in church. I remember when I used to go to church, there was one church that I attended. It was in fact cousins of mine. And they used to literally compete at her church who could shout better. Yes, shout. As in scream and shout and run around the church and show off that you got the Holy Ghost. Who can in fact do it better? They used to run in line and compete in that. Like this is not a game and this is not American Idol. And that I'm thinking ain't God supposed to be in that? I'm thinking God will make a total collision as in a meteorite crashing through the center of the four walls. The center of church and even him not liking that. The competition of who shouts the best. That was the first time I had ever seen that. And yet it's not a put down to church people. No, it's not. It's just some of the stuff in which I've seen and some of the stuff that's covered. So if I can't be fully my sexuality of what I am, liking this and liking that and standing in the center observing, right? If I can't be that, then that's to say you can't be that too. Even the killers that are killing people. I'm sure it's a lot of killers that sit in church more than likely sitting back judging people and yet they're a killer themselves doing all type of things because to kill somebody and walk away from it is to know you could have in fact used religion as a cover of it for the covering that's how people that's how people that is in fact how people get away with crimes because they stand in front of police acting like they're such a good citizen and religious more than anything and they put on a fake face right in front of police and stuff right put on a fake face right in front of police to show a christian face and that's how police in fact fall for that christian face that's in fact how that's done when people who kill people and yet police don't even know that it's happening they don't they don't even know that that sort of thing is happening but i myself can peep that out because to go to church for far too long is to see Many things of which have been did and done. The testimony and sometimes the stuff that goes completely unsaid. There was a, a video on YouTube I came across. A black full developed grown woman when she was a child. eight Somewhere around eight, nine years old. She got up there a grown woman and spoke how her mother would let her own boyfriend, husband, whatever he was molested the daughter the mother did that sort of thing as in just invited the grown man in the house to sleep with her own child sexually putting his hands and fondling her and sticking his grown thing up inside of her knowing you can even damage that the mother did that sort of thing and the girl got on video and it was on youtube for millions of people to see that the mother allowed that to go on the mother in fact, wanted it to go on because if she didn't, she would have stopped it. And the girl came out in testimony right in front of the church. And the mother tried to, in fact, stop the girl from talking as she was on the microphone telling the church. Everybody was standing there in shock. You see what I'm saying? Testimonies like that go down all the time. How that sort of thing happens in the black community. How somebody has, a mother has been allowing a child to be molested by, say, her father or a man that is not even the the child's father, a boyfriend, yes, molests her own daughter, and she allows that sort of thing to be. Congratulations, dear fathers who do that sort of thing. You go to jail in the end. Don't think you don't. Somewhere along the way, somebody will find out a way to lock you up because even certain police officers don't like child molesters because many police officers, I'm sure, some of them had, could have possibly been molested themselves, which is why they don't like that sort of thing. Which is why they joined task force and stuff like that and scoping out who could have done what, even in the Asia degree house and them not telling. I stated before, just because police are not telling that they're still investigating a family, just because a family has passed a polygraph test, right? And police are trying to find out who else could have played a part in it. Just because they're not telling that they're investing, investigating a family, don't think that they're not. Because it has something that close to home is to know you possibly could have did it dear home. Yes, the, whoever was a part of that living in Asia's house, possibly molesting her and putting her hands on her, right? Police oftentimes investigate a whole set of family jewels that's sitting where a young child has went lost, unfound, and sit there and investigate sometimes even them 
years on end when they're trying to see who else could have been a part of that from the outside working in. They investigate that sort of thing for years. And yet even the parents themselves don't even know. They just think they're off. As in off the fly. As in getting away with something and yet that sort of thing might come later. As in possibly one of Asia Degree's parents being found in handcuffs. You don't know. So don't never say. And don't never try to stop people when they're saying certain things. What could in fact possibly be true. Because if you don't live in the house with people. And you're not scoping up the house. Scoping out her house just enough to even see. What could possibly live there is to not even say. As in be quiet. I said that. I took it there didn't I. What is this. His name was his name was Mark Lundell. I'm in a group. Missing person. He was a missing persons. Wow, he's from West Virginia. March 24th, he came missing. Came up missing. I wonder how he died. Some some adults when they come up missing, sometimes some of that be suicide. Some adults do, in fact, when they come up missing, when they come up missing, sometimes that do involve, say, them leaving, but sometimes that involves suicide. But I think I'm going to end this out because the video is a bit too long and we're about to run out of memory. So think about what I said. Ponder what I said. Think about the, the Asia Degree case as a whole, period. You think police going to sit up here and come out? You think police going to sit up here and come out on mass media and tell that they investigating a parent so the parents can in fact book a flight and go out to Mexico somewhere or go to Puerto Rico or somewhere far away? They're not going to do that. To remain as suspicious is just like that. In the realm of the police never saying that they're still scoping out Asia's family. They're not going to tell that. Because for them to even present that the mass media could in fact make the parents themselves run away. As in get away themselves in the getaway car and leave and go to another country. Because even enough guilt was stand there on their end on what they possibly could have done and police more than likely scoping even that out. That was weird to me. See, a case is never closed. See, a case is never closed until the FBI say it's closed. So just because they, the parents took a polygraph test and say pass whatever, and just because police investigated them, that don't mean that the investigation is done with even the parents themselves. Because remember, they played a part of the whole. It's not over until they say it's over, FBI. So they're not going to come out speaking and telling you, the viewer or any of y'all, that they're done investigating the parents. They're just, a, they're just as much investigating them as they're investigating everybody else. Yes, they are. They watch everything. Even when they're doing interviews, they watch the parents do interviews to see if there's emotion or lack of emotion of any kind. Even years later, because even that can tell how people move, sit, and all that other stuff when they ask questions. Ain't no FBI going to be telling you, oh, by the way, we're done investigating the parents. No, I don't think so. That is never going to happen until the case is closed. Because people skip town, skip town on all type of things. And that will be the end of that, as in not being able to find them either if they had something to do with it. That's why you don't speak too soon. You speak after something is closed, pertaining to, say, if, if a parent has something to do with it, and say the police are in question of that and say somebody else could have helped them with that is in disposing the body or something. That's why you don't speak too soon. You mess up a whole case and just saying, you know what, we're no longer investigating a family. If you want somebody to run, speak soon. As in too quickly. So I'm ending this video. That's to be said about that. Ooh. I would love to go to a buffet. I ain't been to a buffet. Like the Golden Corral, I ain't been there in years. Even though I don't eat meat and have it, I will eat some bacon. I should get me some bacon. I'm a vegan right now, so I'm, I'm getting away from meat because I can't digest it right. I'm, in fact, a vegan. 
But Bob Evans sound good. Bob Evans sound good. Some bacon sound good. Some some gravy and uh, what is that? Gravy potatoes. Is it gravy potatoes mixed together? All oh, that sounds good. As in on the spot. That's all to be said for now. And I will be back making more videos. Should I question the teacher? I don't even know if I'm going to remember that. Because that individual don't even stand out the most in this. But maybe I will if I remember. So enjoy your day. Today has been a wonderful day. You know. has Hasn't been perfect. But that's how life goes. It's all an experience. I finally braided my hair. Yay. It's all done. But...